Hey guys, here in front of me I have two 24 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries. I want to connect these batteries up in series in order to make a 48 volt pack. This method is going to apply to, let's say you have two 12 volt batteries and you want to put them in series to make a 24 volt pack, or even if you have four 12 volt batteries and you want to put them into a 48 volt pack, or if you have two 24 volt and you want to put them into a 48. The procedure to do this is pretty much universal for all different battery sizes and all different battery brands. Now it is ideal to buy your batteries at the same time and of the same brand. You have a higher possibility of all the cells being matched and of the same, let's say, quality and manufacturing style. Because what can happen when you connect them in series, if this battery pack has more internal resistance than this battery pack, then this one is gonna hit low voltage disconnect and then this one is just going to sit idle until you get some charge back into the battery and this comes back up to the proper voltage. Now with that being said, you also want to match the voltage before you put them into series. So you can't get two batteries, expect them to be at the same level of state of charge and then connect them together and hope that they work. You will not get your full capacity you will get whatever the lowest rated battery is, that's gonna be your bottom end, and whatever battery has the more charge, then that's gonna be your top end, and you could possibly miss out on a lot of usable energy. So let's get started, let's put these in parallel, and then I'm gonna charge them up to full. So by parallel, you're just connecting the positive and positive, negative and negative, attach your charger, and bring it up to full, and they will both come up to full at the same time. Okay, now here as you can see, I have my positive connected to positive, and this is going to be my negative, and this is the negative for my charger. Now this is a 24 volt charger. It's from Epoch. So this is a smart charger. This is going to give me 29.2 volts, which is the top end voltage for one of these batteries, and it's going to do up to 30 amps. And you can see here, battery, lithium iron phosphate, and this is going to be for an 8S. So there's eight cells in here in series. So first thing I want to do uh, before I connect my battery is I'm going to plug in the charger and allow the charger to charge up the capacitors on its own. And then that way when I make this connection there shouldn't be any spark. Okay, the charging has started. Now I'm just going to confirm that both batteries are getting a charge. And as you can see, we are charging with 30 amps. And there's 15 amps going into the one battery. And just under 15 amps going into the second battery. So now I'm just going to leave this here and it's going to charge up. If this battery charges up first, it's just going to slow down. And this one's going to take the majority of the charging until they both come up and meet the same level of state of charge at the top end. So while those batteries are charging, I'm gonna do some prep work. I'm gonna end up adding them to my bigger bank here in my server rack cabinet. So to achieve this, I bought this uh, shelf off of Amazon. It states that it's good for up to 242 pounds, which is perfect. Uh, the two batteries combined, it's probably gonna be just over 100 pounds. So this shelf is more than enough to carry the weight. I'm thinking I'm gonna add it maybe up here so I can still add a couple more server rack batteries and just low enough so that it's not uh, contacting the metal for my uh, display here. So I'm gonna put this shelf together and then add it into the server rack just to get ready for those two batteries. And the shelf is installed. This was a bit of a pain in the butt. I may have lost two screws trying to get the back part in and they fell down in behind the batteries. Tried to get it with a magnet wand, couldn't do it. So they're back there, they can stay there. But that's the shelf there. And then the two batteries are gonna sit right on here and there should be about inch and a half clearance to the bottom of here. And I'll protect the top of the uh, lugs. Okay, so next let's make some battery cables. Now for the cabling for this, I'm gonna need a small cable here to go in between the positive and the negative. And then I need a positive cable and a negative cable to run over to my two buzz bars. So I'm gonna make up these little cables and uh, Hopefully this battery is gonna get charged up soon. So with my crimper, I like to start with a number two and crimp it and then I work my way up. So this is gonna be a number four wire, which is gonna handle the current that I'm gonna be drawing 
out of this battery and putting it in. And also these batteries have a 100 amp disconnect for overcurrent protection. So I'm not gonna be adding a fuse onto these batteries. I'm gonna allow the BMS to protect my wire. So this is gonna be capable of doing a 100 amp draw and the BMS will cut off if I go over 100 amps. That's the plan, we'll see if it works. And as you can see, we have a very nice crimp. And cables are all finished up, they turned out real nice. I'm gonna use these protective caps to protect the top of the lugs here. So I've got my negative, positive, and then my series connection. Now I could have used a buzz bar style and just have a chunk of metal across these two. Uh, but I just decided there's so many crimps already inside of these batteries. I don't think the resistance that's going to be added from these two lugs is going to make a huge difference. So if you want to try and lower your resistance, uh, use a, a bar across here. But again, the amount of crimps that are in the battery. Still waiting for these two batteries to finish charging. Once they get charged up together, then they'll be good to go. So now as you can see, the batteries are starting to balance. And then into this battery, I have just under seven amps. And then going into this battery, I have 14.5 amps. So now you can see that this battery had more depleted energy than this one. This one was at a higher state of charge. So the charging has slowed on this and it has gone more into this one here. Okay, and the batteries now are charging less than one and a half amps. So I'm gonna stop the charger. If you do not have a bench power supply, you can just let this go until the charger completely kicks off. Uh, but I have a bench power supply, so I'm gonna do something a little different. So for a lithium iron phosphate battery, 29.2 uh, is the upper voltage if all the cells can go to 3.65 volts. But I'm gonna charge it a little bit lower. I'm gonna start at uh, 28 and see where the amps go. Okay, so we can see we're charging with five amps. So what I'm gonna do is lower the amperage down. I'm gonna go roughly about two amps. And then as it gets closer to that 28 volts, uh, it's gonna slow down even more and go to constant voltage, which is gonna allow more absorption. And another reason why I'm gonna very slowly charge the top end of this is because if there's any balancing that needs to be done from the BMSs in either two of these batteries, it's gonna allow it to happen while it's just charging very slowly at the top end. So these batteries probably charge maybe like, I think 30 milliamps, something like that, maybe 50 milliamps between the cells. So it needs to happen very slowly. So I'm just gonna leave this. I'm gonna leave this pack overnight and then come back tomorrow. This will be zeroed out and then I will put my pack into a 48 volt. So putting these two batteries in series. It is now day two. And as you can see, the voltage is at 28.6. I turned it up a bit. It looks like these batteries can go up to 28.8 volts. So I'm at 28.66 and my amperage is down to zero. So these two batteries are perfectly top balanced now together. So now I can put them into a 48 volt pack. Now it's a good idea, maybe, every once a year to pull these batteries out, put them in parallel and charge them up again like this. Or if you notice that your overall capacity has started to diminish, then you might want, might want to pull these batteries apart and put them in parallel and charge them up again like this. and they do fit perfect. So you can see they take up the space perfectly and I actually could have raised it up a little, but I want the extra room for my terminals. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now I noticed something. I thought the positive was on this side, but it's actually negative. So I need to make up some new cables to route down and around into the bus bar. So need to make up new positive and negative cables. I already have my series cable, which is gonna work, but I need to make up longer battery cables now. You can see the sun is starting to come up. I have 52 watts coming in on the solar, so that's good. Now, before I make my connection to my larger battery bank, my battery bank is sitting at around 50%, and those two batteries connected in 48 is at 100% state of charge. 
So it's gonna be quite a shock to the system. I could do it, but I'm just gonna err on the side of caution and I'm gonna drain these batteries down for a little while. So I have a smart plug hooked up here so I can do a timer on it. And then I have the 48 volt uh, pure sine wave inverter connected to those two, which comes over to this charger and then this charger is connected into the buzz bar, which is connected to the larger bank. So in effect, I'm gonna drain those batteries into these batteries here. And we are now discharging with 17 amps. And I can see here I have almost 700 watts going into the battery. So I'm gonna run this for a few hours and then I'll make my connections to my actual bars. And the wiring turned out super nice. So I have cap protectors on all of them and then I've got them zip tied and they run down. And my negative bar runs here and then my positive bar, it runs into here. So next what I have to do is update the app so next what I have to do is I have to calibrate the Victron Smart Shunt to give me my overall capacity. So I have the accurate reading here for the solar assistant. And it's simple super to do so. So all I need to do is connect to my Victron Shunt via Bluetooth. And there you go, once it's connected, we can go over here to the battery. And now I'm simply just gonna add 100 amp hours so 630 amp hours and we are connected i got the green light so there you go so now once the battery charges up to full then it's going to recalibrate the whole system to 100 percent and then from there on once i charge and discharge it'll all be properly calculated okay so this was just a video to show you me putting two 24 volt batteries into a 48 volt configuration if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Smash the like button before you go, and thank you for watching. Bye.